supposed to be. Thank you. Over to you, Stephanie. All right, thank you so much, Pastor. I am going to share. How's that? Can everyone see my screen? All right, perfect. Okay. Um, sorry, one second. All right, good morning, ladies. Um, thank God, thank you, Pastor um, Mika, for the opportunity and our pastors to um, speak today. Um, I, I think this really was a, a God doing because I thought I had gotten out of presenting um, for QBIV. I mean, the year was almost over. I was like, well, halfway through the year, I was like, oh, we're good. Like, I can, you know, relax and just come in and listen in on Saturdays. But God definitely has a sense of humor uh, when Pastor Nikkei reached out to me about this. But I think, and you'll see in the course of what I'm about to talk today, that, you know, God has plans for our lives, right? He specifically spoke to Pastor Nikkei to select me to talk about what we're going to talk about today, because it was almost like I was talking to myself, like I was reading through and I was like, ah, this is for you. This is why she selected you to talk about these Bible verses, Right. Um, so let's just get started. You can see my screen. I'm going to be talking about um, Proverbs 15, chapters 15 through Ecclesiastes uh, 4. So, you know, in thinking just through, through, through Proverbs, what it is, what it is, right? So what is a proverb, right? Let's just, let's just, you know, kind of go in the dictionary and figure out what a proverb is, right? So it's a short traditional saying that expresses some obvious truth or familiar experience, Right. There's a lot of meaning in a proverb. And this gets me thinking back to, you know, I grew up in Nigeria, growing back in Nigeria, right? There's a lot of proverbs, there's a lot of adages that we grew up with, right? And, um, you know, so one of them is when a king's palace burns down, right? The rebuilt palace is more beautiful, right? You know, when, you, when you're going through struggles, right? We all experience struggles in life, right? Well, you get through it, you get through that tunnel and you come out on the other side and it's just amazing. And you can't believe that you just went through all the struggles you just went through, right? Let's think of another one. Um, all lizards lie flat on their stomach. It is difficult to determine which one has a stomach ache. I was trying to think about a good example to bring this home for us and our dear princess came to mind. Megan Markle is my princess, came to mind. She literally is a part of the royal family. But I don't know if you've watched her documentary that she did recently with Oprah, where she shared about all her struggles, right? Can you imagine her living with one of the richest families in the world? She's a princess for crying out loud, like a real life princess. And she's going through all the struggles she's going through. And I pulled this picture, this one right here, this blue one specifically where she's pregnant right here. And she gave an example in that documentary and said her husband, Harry, was holding her very, very tight this day just to let her know, I'm with you, babe. I'm present. She said literally before she left the house on this day, she was crying. She was depressed. But she had to show up, right? It's the business. She had to show up, right? So you look at her and you can't really, I mean, yeah, she has a, her face is not as smiley as the other ones. But you, you couldn't even imagine what she had gone through before she came out to do this function that she's in, right? And so I think about Proverbs and I just wanted to kind of bring out, you know, a couple examples to us, right? So um, the, the book of Pro Proverbs um, is linked back to King Solomon, right? And the Bible tells us in 1 Kings uh, chapter 3 that Solomon had asked God for wisdom to lead the Israelites well, right? He was essentially known as one of the smartest men in the ancient world. He knew everything. I mean, when I read through um, 1 Kings chapter 4, 29 to 34, he could tell you about any plant. Bring up a plant, he can tell you about it. Bring up how to build some mansion from bottom to top, he can tell you about it. Like that's how smart it was. And um, 1 Kings tells us that he composed 3,000 proverbs. He wrote 3,000 proverbs and wrote uh, and composed 1,005 songs. That's a lot, right? So, and 
that's what we know about, right? This really tells you that Solomon is a smart man. He's a man of wisdom, right? And that's essentially what Proverbs is. Proverbs is for everyone in every season of life, right? It's a guide for us to live wisely. And it even says it in Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord, right? Where can wisdom be found? In the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? That's how we relate that. So it's like, it, I, I guess when I was reading through Proverbs, I kind of thought about it as that girlfriend, right? That is always with you, that, that helps you out in every situation. I mean, if you read through Proverbs, there is literally, no matter what you're going through in life, there is a proverb for it. Like every single thing, like it's amazing. Like the, the things that may seem mundane as you're reading through Proverbs, and um, it's it's kind of hard to go through everything, but I'll highlight a few just because of our time, right? So um, here's here's one example, right? If you are thinking about Proverbs, you want to know about pride, right? It's in Proverbs, right? Let's let's talk about it. It's in Proverbs chapter sixteen, verse fifteen. It's in chapter sixteen, verse eighteen. It's in chapter eighteen, verse twelve, right? It's it's all over in there. Um, you want to know about lazy people? It's in Proverbs as well, right? It's in 19, chapter 19, verse 15. It's in chapter 10, verse 4, right? It's in a few verses. Um, if you want to know about, about loyalty, right? We all know what that is. You want to know about loyalty? It's in Proverbs as well, right? You want to know if you should be running your mouth when you don't have all the facts? It's in Proverbs. Matter of fact, I want to read exactly what, um, what this proverb says, because I mean, so it's Proverbs chapter 18, verse, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. Proverbs 18, verse 13. It says, spouting off. Listen, this is in the Bible. These are my words. Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish, right? So it's, you, I guess as I was reading through it, I wasn't thinking about all this like life lessons, essentially things we leave every single day that are in the Bible, right? Um, wanna know about, you know, whether, you know, some of us are married on, on this call, you know, wanna know about being a nagging wife. It's in the Bible as well. Proverbs chapter 21, verse uh, nine, it's all in there. Matter of fact, this Bible, this particular Bible verse says, a man would rather go live in the corner in the attic, like in the corner. No, it, the attic is not a fun place to be, but he would rather go in the corner in the attic than to deal with a nagging wife, right? Like that, that's, that's pretty telling, right? And um, finally, this is one I never really thought about, right? Have you ever thought about co-signing a loan for someone before? Have you co-signed a loan for someone before? Should you co-sign a loan for someone? I hope you all read what I read in Proverbs because the answer is in there. Proverbs chapter six, verse one to five. In fact, it says, if you've done it, right? Cause some of us have done it. Quickly run back to the person, right? And bother them until they either pay their debts off or they you know, get you off of the loan or whatever it is, right? So that's why I say, you know, as I was reading through Proverbs, it's almost like that, that real life girlfriend, right? That's kind of right there with you. That's kind of helping you. It's a compilation of wisdom, right? Of several people over the years that's there to kind of help us live a life of God, to help us live humbly before God, right? Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through, like I said earlier, when, when I was going through this, I was like, man, God has a sense of humor because it's almost like he knew I needed some of these verses that kind of spoke to me as I was reading through this since I can't get through everything, right? Um, so the first one that I specifically want to call out is um, Proverbs 15.1, right? A gentle answer turns away at rod. Um, and and this, is, this is real life for us, right? Um, I, I think about... Um, an example, uh, I was talking to some of the ladies about it. I don't know if you all know Tabitha Brown. I didn't know who Tabitha Brown was until last week, um, but I knew who Wendy Williams was. I know a lot of you know who Wendy Williams is, but apparently Tabitha did something amazing for her husband and she spoke on it publicly. She posted about it. Um, 
And Wendy Williams had the nerve to say something degrading about her husband, about Tabitha's husband, right? Um, for, for the ladies that are married, I mean, you don't, don't say nothing wrong about my husband, right? I mean, that's your family. That's the crown. That is who God has given you, right? You don't want nobody disrespecting your husband. That's disrespecting your home, right? It's almost like they're asking for a fight, right? But um, what did Tabitha do? Ladies, when you get up this call, please go find her on Instagram and listen to her video. She went on Instagram and responded to Wendy. And the way she was talking, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like she was so kind in her response, but it was also so shady. I don't even, I don't know if you can have shady and kind in the same. It was almost like she was so soft-spoken. She said, Miss Wendy, God bless you. I hope you find the kind of love that I have. I hope that God blesses you with the kind of love that he has blessed me with for me to be able to do this for my husband. Like you don't understand it. You don't get it. Matter of fact, I feel sorry for you because you don't have this kind of love in your life. You don't, you don't know what it is to love somebody like this and for somebody to love you in return. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, right? But that's essentially what she said. And she was so soft-spoken, just like I'm talking right now. This is not how I talk normally. When she said it, right? I mean, I was weak. So if you were Miss Wendy, wouldn't you go sit in one corner in your room, right? And think about your life like, okay, like I, I shouldn't be talking about people's husbands like this, right? Um, so it just, but Tabitha could have come and be like, how dare you talk of my husband, da, 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 right? Like you're so disrespectful, you're so rude, you're so this, you're so that, right? And what would that do? That would cost Miss Wendy to fire back again, right? And then it just keeps going on and on, on and on, right? So it's a gentle answer turns away wrath, right? Like we, we shouldn't always want to put up a fight, right? Extend grace to other people, right? Like, like Miss Tabitha did to Miss Wendy, like it was almost like, I, I know you don't understand. So I'm not even going to try to fight you on this. I'm going to pray for you, right? To understand this better. Um, then the next one is um, Proverbs 16.1. I like, this is a passion translation. Go ahead and make all the plans you want, but it's the Lord who will ultimately direct your steps, right? I love the, the, the passion translation of this. It's essential, and then if you look at Proverbs 16, 33, it says, we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how to fall. For those of you that play Ludo, you know the importance of double six, right? Like we can roll the dice, but only God will show the double six, right? So, it really lets you know that God has control over our lives, right? Don't worry about it. That's, that's essentially what they spoke to me, right? Is we need to lift up every plan to God. And at the end of the day, he will ultimately direct our paths and provide enough opportunities for us, right? Um, it's almost a year to the day. A lot of you um, know about my testimony, right? About a shooting um, in the house a year ago. I had my plans. I mean, I have my family in the suburb of Houston, right? I'm trying to stay away from the crime. We're all trying to stay away from the crime. So we're all buying homes or getting apartments in safe neighborhoods, right? I was inside my house, right? That was my plan, inside my house. I was minding my business in my house. The plan that I had, let me go buy a house in a safe neighborhood, right? But God knew that shooting was gonna happen. He knew, he knew. And you know why I know he knew? Because that, that shouldn't happen literally saved my life two weeks later. If that, happen, if that shouldn't did not happen the day it happened, I should tell the second part of my, my testimony. If that shouldn't did not happen the day it happened, I wouldn't be with you right now. And if I'm even in, if, if I'm here right now, I would be on the lane on the bed, unable to talk or unable to speak in a vegetative state. But when that shouldn't happen, I didn't realize that, right? Like it says, God knows all the plans. He's worked out our lives. He knows the future. He knows everything, right? We just need to learn to trust him. And um, verse 16, verse three says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. We can make all the plans we want, but only what God says will happen. Um, 
The next one I wanna speak on is uh, Proverbs 15 verse 30, right? A cheerful heart, you know, is good medicine. This really goes without saying, but as I was, you know, preparing for today and I was praying, you know, God speak to me, you know, there's, just, there's so many proverbs that we're reading through. Which ones do you want me to highlight, right? Which ones do you want me to talk to? And, you know, this was one of the ones that, that, that came up, right? And we've all had bad days, right? And a simple smile from a stranger can literally turn that around. Have you gone out, had a bad day, and you came home and you saw your kids or you saw your dog or you saw your pet fish and that literally just changed the course of your day, right? So put a smile on your face, you know? People have told me all the time that I have a very interesting look. People that meet me for the first time, it's okay. I know all of you know, you've thought it in your mind when you be like, ah, a little, smile a little bit now. So I know that, right? And I am working on it, seriously speaking. I am intentionally working on it. So if you see me back there in DKZ going like this, you know the reason why, right? Because I'm, I know things that I need to do better, right? And I know a smile can make a big difference in someone's life or even a compliment, right? It's not, it's, it's, this is a cheerful look, but it's not necessarily about the look. It may be something you say. It may be, oh, your dress looks beautiful today. It may be your hair looks nice. It may be, wow, Pastor Cola, great message today. That really, really spoke to me, right? I like the way you did that. Um, it could be supporting other people's businesses, right? It's not necessarily about the look on your face. It's what you do, right? Um, this week, the, the teach kid, kids teach kids. I need to get it right. I'm always going to forgive me if I don't do it right. The KTK, right? They had their, their camp, their summer camp this week. And when I was picking my kids up, I was so impressed at the number of kids that were there, right? Um, I was telling Pastor Cole and Pastor uh, Nikkei, like, you probably didn't know what you signed up for. You probably thought maybe only three kids were going to show up. The house was full of kids. But why do I bring that up? I bring that up because we wanted to support them, right? You want to encourage that. Because when you encourage that, guess what it does? It puts a smile on their face. It lets them know, oh, we can accomplish this. We can do this. And can you imagine what that will even do long term when you build that confidence, right? So I, I kind of wanted to throw different examples out there to say it's not just about the smile. Sometimes it's about what you do. It's about supporting that small business, right? It's about pay what they ask, right? Don't, don't try to haggle with a small business. If you cannot afford it, then move on, right? Support them, right? Um, don't say, ah, if they say this is $50, I'm like, ah, ah, Zajudi, come on now, do it for $40. No, 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 no. Pay that fee. You know, that's you validating them. That's you telling them, I believe in you. That's you telling them you can do this. You got this, right? And what's that going to do? It's going to help build their confidence and it's going to help them grow, right? So I kind of wanted to throw a few examples out there, right? And, um, our uh, HOD, our uh, children's department HOD, Antipola, I tell her all the time, I don't understand how you have this much energy. Like, I legit tell her, like, I cannot be in a bad mood around you. I tell her all the time because she's always on 10. It doesn't matter if you're talking to her in the morning. It doesn't matter if you're talking to her in the minute, evening. It doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the day. Like, she's always on 10. So if you're around that kind of positive energy, how can you now be a Debbie Downer, right? You know, it's surrounding yourself with those people, right? And, and being intentional about it, right? But I bring her up as an example because I almost every time I talk to her, like I can't be in a bad mood around you because she just brings out that joy in you, right? Like she's always happy. And even if you're a bad day, matter of fact, the next time you're having a bad day, call Paula. Trust me, you'll be good. Just, just call Antipola the next time you're having a bad day. You'll be good. But um, I really pray, you know, that, that God would just, you know, kind of help guide us and help show us the different ways. These are just some examples that I, I thought about, but there is so many, many, many more, right, that we can think about. And um, uh, in, in Proverbs, we're, we're finishing up Proverbs um, now. The, the last one I wanted to talk about is um, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. 
Um, and this is this is one of the main ones that I was like, okay, yeah, God, this is really why you wanted me to do this one, right? It says, listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. Aging parents can be very, very interesting to deal with, right? They take more patience. They take more time, right? Sometimes they just want you to sit with them and have a nice two hour long conversation that you don't have time for because you have to take the kids somewhere or you have to cook dinner or you have to do this, right? But how important it is to spend time with them, right? And learn from them, right? Again, there's another Proverbs, we're in Proverbs that says, no matter how many clothes a child has, you can never have as many rags as an older person, right? So sit with them, spend some time with them. They've lived this life. They are the true definition of Proverbs, if you think about it. They've experienced a lot of things over time, right? And we can certainly learn a lot from them. Um, Ephesians 6, 1 to 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment, right? So that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on earth. Um, this one really spoke to me because I, I tend to, you know, like, okay, mommy, like, Two minutes. Okay, yeah, we're good. Yes, the kids are good. Oh, you want to see the kids? Okay, mommy, say hi to grandma. And you say hi to, okay, mommy, can we talk to you later, right? And the conversation is over. But she wants to spend more time with you, right? Spend more time with them, right? That's what Proverbs is telling us. That's that's a real life lesson um, right there. And uh, so th those are, you know, kind of my main things that kind of spoke to me as we're going through the book of Proverbs. Now let's go through Ecclesiastes real quick, right? Ecclesiastes is a very interesting one, right? As you're kind of reading through it, it um, it almost starts out sad, right? I mean, kind of telling you life is futile, right? Life is meaningless. There's nothing in life, right? Um, no matter what you have in life, you know, you can have all the houses you want, everything you want, right? That's who is meaningless, right? But if you really think about it, um, it's like, it's meaningless only if we don't think about it in terms of eternity, in terms of living with God, right? In terms of having, in terms of having faith, right? Um, it's only meaningless if you're only thinking about the here and now, everything under the sun, right? Versus, oh no, there's much more than that, right? I'm only on this earth to do God's bidding, right? But after this, there's so much more than that, right? Um, going to chapter two, it tells us about the futility of pleasure, right? Actually, verse one actually says, come on, let's try pleasure. Let's look for the good things in life, right? Let's go buy that Prada purse. I mean, Proverbs didn't say that, that's me, but let's go buy that Tesla, right? Let's go build that mansion, right? Um, verse four, I also try to find meaning by building homes for myself and planting beautiful vineyards. Verse 10, Anything I wanted, I will take. I denied myself no pleasure. I found great pleasure in hard work. But as I looked at everything else, it was meaningless, right? Essentially saying I could afford whatever I wanted to afford, right? I could buy whatever I wanted to buy, but it was still meaningless, right? There was still nothing to it. Um, and then verse 24 says, so I decided there is nothing better than to enjoy food and drink and to find satisfaction in work. Then I realized that these pleasures are from the hand of who? God, right? Then I realized these pleasures are from the hand of God. For who can eat or enjoy anything apart from him? Again, that brings us back to the eternal perspective, right? To it's not about here and now, right? It's about what happens after I'm done here right? What legacy am I leaving behind? But most importantly, where am I going and where will I end up, right? Um, chapter three um, says, there is a right time. This is where it talks about time for everything, right? God arranges even the smallest details of our surroundings. We have no control. We may think we do, but we have no control over anything. His timing is precise to the very second, and as I was studying for this, it took me back to Genesis 21, verse 2, with Sarah. For Sarah con conceived and bore Abraham a son in his whole old age at the set 
time of which God has spoken to him. The New Living Translation says, this happened at just the time God said it would, right? Just that second, right? There is a time for everything. And God knows, isn't it amazing that he can see every second and everything that we do? Um, chapter, um, verse four says, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Um, even Jesus wept in John chapter 11, verse 35, right? A shortest verse in the Bible, it says Jesus wept. Um, he's our example in everything. We'll go through struggles, right? We may lose a loved one. We're going to weep when that happens, right? It's natural to weep, but there's also time to dance, right? Second Samuel 6, 14 or 15 says, and David danced before the Lord with all his might, right? There's a time for everything, right? So um, let's appreciate the beauty in this next verse, right? God has made everything beautiful in his time. Here yet again, it talks about time, right? Whatever God does is final, right? Nothing can be added to it or taken away from it. Um, and finally, um, I'll end here. Verse 22 says, there is nothing better for people than to be happy in their work, right? That is our lot in life. No one can bring us back to see what happens after we die. So the boss here isn't necessarily your boss at work, but the boss here represents pleasing other people, doing something you're not supposed to be doing, right? It's essentially saying, do what makes you happy. You report to the Lord, right? And the boss is on the other, on the other side, right? You report directly to Jesus. Um, when, when we realize how limiting some of the other things we do are that aren't making us happy, we cut it out, right? Because like verse 22 says, there's nothing there for you to be happy. That is our lot in life, right? Believing in God and no one can bring us back, you know? You, so you have to be intentional about living the life you want and making the changes you want to. So um, I'll close by saying, you know, seize the moment. Don't waste another second. Write that book, start that business, start that podcast. Call that girlfriend you had a falling out with. Call that family member you haven't spoken to in months because you're upset at them, right? Because the time will go by whether or not we decide to use it the way we want to use it to make us happy or not. So um, thank you for this opportunity. And I pray that God will give us grace and he will give us direction in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, I told you guys, God is just blowing our mind. Is official sister for Louis, our practical minister or practical pastor. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Thank you so, so much. I was really blessed. I was taking a lot of notes and um, I'm just speechless. I'm speechless. I was really blessed. Thank you. And God will continue to honor you. Amen. And, Thank you, Pastor. And just Sorry, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out how to stop sharing, Sister Julianne. Am I still sharing? You're still sharing. But I think when. Yes, yes you are. So I will just um, take over. But thank you so much. And I hope you have a consulting business on how to create slides. <laughs> this was really great. It was very practical and um, we were blessed. Thank you. Pastor Shim, over to you. Over to you, Pastor Shim. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you, Pastor Nikki. That was awesome. So that's a top, top act to follow. <laughs> I was looking at her slides and at some point I was like, oh Lord, why can't you just finish this whole thing? <laughs> so y'all don't judge me, okay? Don't judge me. Uh, sister, sister Polu like just blew, blew the top, the lid off. Um, so that was awesome. That was awesome. So we're going to just take a few minutes uh, and because I want us to be able to, there's so much packed in from Proverbs where she covered to um, Isaiah. There's so much, even in the two books of Ecclesiastes and um, the Song of Solomon, so much packed there. And I just really, I want to hear y'all's, um, uh, your thoughts on some of those things, but let me go ahead and just share my screen and we'll just run over. Okay, hold on one second. That's not where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, everybody can see my screen, yes? Okay, so basically, um, I, I ended up just kind of doing a, a summary of Ecclesiastes 
um, all the way through. And so I, I'm just going to reiterate one part that Sister um, Folu did. It wasn't officially mine, but I was just so blessed by it. And, and she touched on some of that. But um, again, like she said, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by um, Solomon, who was, you know, often called the, the book actually um, is the song, the Ecclesiastic and Song of Solomon are the last books, right? In the books of the law, right? You know, the Bibles are are categorized into cer certain books. So Ecclesiastics and Song of Solomon are the last two of the books of the law. And they're written just like Proverbs words by um, the preacher, Solomon. So she already kind of went about talking about the, you know, the vanity of life. He, he talked about that a lot in chapters, um, in chapter five. Um, he talked about everything, everything is vain, you know, the question of life, everything, everything that you're doing, he talked about, you know, being um, the riches, right, See, even seeking wisdom, that, that is vain, and in chapter five, I really kind of wanted to point out, well, before I go to chapter five, I, I want to touch on chapter three, which talks about time, you know, under the, for everything under the sun to everything there's a season there's a time for a purpose for everything i just kind of reading that i just kind of was remembered of some things you know um about seasons and there's one book that i love and i love it's called the seasons of life by jim Rome. it's important to understand times and season because when you know i think pastor nika says that a lot the sons of um isaka they had understanding of times right like pastor Nick will always say and really if you understand that there's a time for everything. Nothing is going to last forever. So whether it's your the spring or the fall or the winter, know that it's not going to last forever. So if you're going through one challenge or another, know that in time, it's going to come to an end. Now, if you are, the, the sooner you understand the purpose of that season and what you're supposed to get out of that season, the, you can actually shorten the duration of that season, but it's not going to last forever. You know, this is Tim, I mean, um, Crime will last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Nothing lasts forever, as we see here in the book of Ecclesiastes. And if if life is good, right? So if life is, if, if things are not going well in, in that season, whether it's the winter or the fall, when things just aren't as fruitful as you expect them to be, use that time to draw close to God. When you have questions in life, use that, you know, um, like he goes over and over it. The ultimate conclusion was, at the end of it all, just serve God and draw close to God. So in those seasons, when things aren't going so well, what should you be doing? Getting closer to God. Let your challenges draw you closer to God and not away. And then if you are in a season that everything is good, that's great. We bless God for that. We all want to be in that season. But also know the purposes of those seasons. So you don't, you know, like, like um, in, in I'm reminded of Joseph in Israel, you know, there was a time when things were good. They were, what were they doing? They were keeping, it was keeping things in the storehouse, right? There's a season. So when things are good and you, you have all this money coming in, all these resources, don't eat with your 10 fingers. They're seasons. So <laughs> prepare. And when things are good, prepare, because you just never know, right? You just never know. So I, I was just really blessed by that. And if you get a chance, please um, read that book. Very, very short read. You can probably read it in two hours, The Seasons of Life by Jim Rome. So um, chapter five, where I would start, basically talks about, and I'm looking at my time, um, talks about, you know, um, fearing God and keeping your vows. I just wanted, I'm gonna point out just a few things that stand out to me. Um, verse four of chapter five says, um, when, you, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, you know, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed, better not to vow Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. You know, this <laughs> divine encounter just ended. So that just kind of popped in my mind. What vows have you made? Whether a divine encounter, whether it's a financial vow, um, a, 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 you know, a seed that you've promised God. What is that thing? Maybe you said, oh God, if you, if you give me this thing, if you give me this child, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Are you, falling, are, are you following through on your vows? God ra would rather have you not vow at all than you not um, fulfill your vows. Um, and then also another thing that stood out to me was uh, in, in chapter, in verses 19, you know, it talks about, you know, basically this, I don't know what you call it, this conundrum or, or sounds like a paradox, you know, God, it says in 19, it says, as, as for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth and given him power to eat of it, 
to receive his heritage and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. Uh, um, and then it goes on to say that there are some people who do good and don't get to enjoy, you know, that, you know, that, that wealth, right? So everything, you know, God, God is the master orchestrator. Why good things happen to bad people, we don't know. But ultimately, the goal in life is to be able to, you know, to enjoy everything. It's a gift of God that you can enjoy your riches, that you can enjoy, you know, wealth and everything that you have. It is truly um, a gift from God. Let me see. I've got 20 more minutes. Again, just reiterating vanity upon vanity, you know, vanity of riches, um, and just emphasizing that, you know, a lot of things that you have, again, it's all, it's all vanity. I think that was one thing that was, that's the whole scripture, the whole um, book is about. Chapter seven, you know, in, in this book, actually, there were a lot of popular scriptures, like memory verses that, that were coming out of there that, I don't know that you, if you guys um, caught those, there are a lot, lot of things like, um, one of my favorite scriptures in, I'm not even there, sorry. But in, I believe it's in chapter nine, verse four, it says, but, to him, for, but for him who is joined to all the living, for there is hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion, you know? So um, one of those things, you know, when you're going through situations and things seem hopeless, but the fact that you have life, there's hope. I would say where there's life, there's hope. Um, let me see. I have just a couple more minutes here. Um, so again, in chapter eight, he talks about, um, you know, where, where the word of a king is, there's power. Again, a reminder to, you know, to respect or submit to authorities. Um, for God's sakes, God puts those people that are in authority in that place. So whether or not you like them, you you follow that, right? And God is a righteous judge. You will ultimately judge the righteous and the wicked. Uh, also a reminder that death comes to all, right? So again, whether someone is rich or they're poor, they all have the same end. So one one thing that he kept saying is, he kept asking, um, is it is it good to be to be rich or to be poor, I, there was a point where he was just kind of putting opposites against each other. At the very end, whether you're seeking wealth or whatever you're seeking, it doesn't matter. Um, verse nine, one of the things that I, one of the scriptures that stood out in, in chapter nine for me was, or reminder rather is verses 10 through 11. Let me move there. Um, basically saying that um, whatever your hands find to do, do it well as you are, you know, being diligent in whatever God has committed into your hands, be diligent and, and do it with excellence. Um, and also a reminder in verse 11 that the race is not to the swift, right? Not the battle to the strong, but time and chance happen to them all. You know, when we are diligent, like verse 10 says, and we, we put our hands in and we're diligent, when our time and chance come, you know, we will, we will be victorious, we'll benefit from it. Sorry, my slides, I'm not going line by line on my slides, but I think you all get the this. And ultimately, um, let me just skip ahead to chapter, chapter 12. So I felt like this chapter, at least towards the end, was the essentially the, what he was all talking about, the conclusion of his, of all his, um, I don't know, his thesis or whatever he was saying. So one thing was remember God early in life um, that really stood out in, in verse one, whether things are good, you know, the early in life, he talks about remember God in your, in your youth, that can be yes, your youth by the number of your years, but also in good times when things are good, when you're innocent, everything seems to be flourishing right in the morning time morning of your life, or just when everything is all good and dandy. Um, one thing that, you know, stood out to me is, is when life is empty or seem to be full of questions and uncertainty, choose to have God's perspective. Choose God's perspective in everything. Um, if I had to summarize it, and activate your faith. Search for God, okay? Again, all is vanity, okay? Everything is vanity. You're trying to chase, um, you're trying to build that house. Yes, God has a purpose for us that we must all fulfill. We must not lose sight of that. And when we walk according to his plans and purposes, you know, we, we will definitely at the time of judgment, we will come out on, um, we'll be counted faithful. And 
verses 13 and 14 basically kind of they sum it up they says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter so what is the duty the whole duty of man it says it's to fear god and keep his commandments for this is man's all this is it fear god and obey his commandments so whether whether it's his instruction to you in a certain area of the life of your life make sure you follow through and and do that all right so then we go on to the song of solomon okay so uh you i'm sure we've all read this you could probably read it in the passion translation for a more illustrative um uh what do you call it experience but it really it's all about love right it's all about love it, it shows you that love is 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 a beautiful thing but one a few things i kind of gleaned from it the first part first three chapters Let's take a shower guys please okay and so the first few chapters kind of talk about attraction right the man and woman talk about the attraction to one another and then they go on and and you know they're kind of going the, the man and, and the shulamite woman they're going back and forth but i see there just different chapters from verses three to three to six it's really about commitment let me point out one or two things um in that so i can't okay but it's it's really about commitment so it talks about love um the attraction, the commitment, and then ultimately the growing of love. Like for love to grow, you must be faithful. And I, I see all this as basically an illustration of intimacy between man and woman, which is husband and wife, right? In a, in a homosexual, uh, sorry, in a, in a heterosexual <laughs> marital relationship. Okay, so it's 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 a blessing, right? God blesses that union that's between a man and a woman, right? In the confines of marriage. And this describes all of that. So for people who think that, you know, maybe sex is a bad thing, read this, read this book, go back and read this book. God, God um, um, endorses it, right? And so another thing, just out of the, you know, the physical, the intimacy between man and woman, I also think um, it talks a lot about commitment, like our commitment to God. It does one thing it reminds me of, just trying not to make it all uh, um, sexual, but it just reminds me of, commitment to God? Are we committed to God? You know, we say we love God. Can you really love without being committed, right? Can you love without being um, faithful? So, and, and one thing also is that when we're committed to, to God, when we're committed to, follow, um, to, to loving him and, and doing and following through with his instructions, obeying his commandments, there is a joy in that. Just like, you know, they describe the joy of of being with each other and you know the joy of each other's presence there's a joy that comes from being in the presence of god so that's really all i wanted to just kind of point out on that in that chapter and then just quickly going to the book of isaiah sorry my slides only go through chapter four i'm sorry about that um so isaiah chapter the isaiah basically starts out with a case against judah Okay, as I start out with a, game, a case against Judah, so we're kind of shown like a courtroom, if you would say. Um, let's. So it starts out in verse in chapter one, verse two, saying, "Oh, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth." So I kind of see this as a courtroom, right, where God is calling heaven and earth as witnesses against who the defendants is um, the, the, the nation of Israel. God is the judge, he's the righteous judge. What did they do? They were rebellion, they were corrupt. They forgot their first love, they left God. Um, and how did they do that? By idolatry, by not worshiping him, worshiping him well, right? Like how he, he, he ought to be worshiped by seeking after other things and also by being pervert in justice, right? Um, not, not doing what they ought to do. Um, not, not um, rebuke, like oppressing for oppressing those around them. And what was ultimately their, their sentence or the, the sentence for, uh, for unrepentance is destruction. But for those who, who choose to not repent, it's, you know, they get destruction. And for the remnants, the remnant who are repentant, right, who chooses to turn aside from their evil ways, the sentence is mercy. And a reminder to us that, you know, God does not, I believe it's in, um, if you read this chapter in the message version, 
in verse 13, it says, yeah. So verse 11 basically says like, God wants your heart, heart, right? To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? My God says, why, why are you burning all these sacrifices? God really wants your heart. In, in verse 13 of message translation, it puts it plainly. It says, quit your worship charades. All this religion, all this, um, you know, traditions, things that have been passed down and you're just doing it and without any, without any relationship with me, you're just following the motions. God does not want that. It says, bring no more future sacrifices. Incense is, um, is an abomination to me. Why? Because they're not coming from a place of, uh, they're not coming from a, they're not, it's not coming from the right heart, right? It's, it's coming definitely with um, stained hands, right? With sin. And God does not take pleasure in sin. We know that. So sin is an abomination to him. So he he's calling us to be, the remnants that, you know, choose to repent essentially. And, and God will cleanse you when you choose to turn away from your evil way, God will cleanse you and you will be a partaker. You will receive his mercy. And let me see here. And so that's basically what I wanted to point out there verse in chapter. Okay. Hold on, there's no more slides. Okay, I think I cut off some of my slides there. But that's really what I wanted to point out. That that was the main thing there. It, it's those first few chapters. God is basically telling them, you have not been doing right by me. Um, and here is your judgment. And so in the f- chapters after after um, six or six onward, God talks about you know their fate. If you choose uh, to repent, God will, re- you know, God will cleanse you and you you would um you will be restored, right? He will restore everything back to you. You will be, um, you will be renewed. And so that is all that I have. I hope that we get to one thing that I've definitely learned over the last few few months is just using more, using different translations more because it gives a different. It helps you to understand it a little bit better. So make sure that we are doing that as we study the Word of God because sometimes. Uh, King James Version or New King James Version may make it a bit dense and you're just kind of like reading words, right? We don't want to just read the word, but we want to get revelation out of it. So find, try different um, translations and find which ones um, you understand so you can really get the rema out of the word. And that's all I have. I'm just going to give a couple of, yeah, kind of throw the floor open, Pastor Nika. Praise the Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Pastor Sheo. Thank you. That was a lot of... Uh, books of the Bible that we just went through all the way from Proverbs to Isaiah. But I must tell you guys, I think everything just points to that, you know, relationship with God, that intimacy with God and how he chases us and we chase him. He chases us, we chase him down. And, you know, even the song of Solomon, I know what Sister Anna texted us, go and read it in TPT. When I started TPT, I was like, what? But if you keep reading now, then, but the, the core of it is just visualize, like Pastor Sean was saying, you know, not just marriage relationship, but also your relationship with God. The whole Bible is a story of how God desires intimacy, fellowship with us, and how we let go of that, and how, you know, he's drawing us to him, we're drawing near to him, and examples of people who drew near to him, examples of people who drew back, our portion will not be to draw back in Jesus' name. So as we read this, you know, the book of Isaiah, we have so many prophecies in there that we all love to point out to like, oh, my my children are for size and wonders. Women of God, you better read the whole from the beginning to the end before you, you want your children to be size and wonders. Do your seat belts. Are you ready for it? You know, so I think, again, this is the beauty of coins in Bible volume you know, us studying the whole Bible, not just one verse or chapter, but reading the whole picture, seeing God's perspective, not just what we like, but God's whole picture and saying, so before you quote those scriptures, you know, I'm sure the angels are like, just God, they're asking you to make their children signs and wonders. Are they ready for, (laughs) you know, so we need to really you know, go deep. And I don't know about you guys, but it's been quite a journey for me. It's a lot. I I won't lie to you. It's a lot trying to keep up and dig deep, but God sees your hunger and he will always, you know, the Bible says, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. And I must tell you, not just does he draw near when we draw near, God can chase us down. 
You know, when we're hungry for him, he can chase us down. Even sometimes you don't even want to see him, talk to him. He still chases you down. That is his faithfulness. So let us, you know, I, I think there's a scripture in the Bible that says, while you have time now, <laughs> while you can find God, draw near now. Don't, 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 you know, be those that God abandons. He will never abandon you in Jesus' name. So does anybody have anything to say from the book of Proverbs? Yeah, Staffolu and Pastor Shemu said it right. Ecclesiastes was very interesting. In the beginning, I was like, seriously, Solomon, are you that depressed or something <laughs> after everything you went through? You know, but it's very, very life lessons, practical life lessons. And the book of Proverbs, oh my goodness, I think I've shared so many testimonies telling you guys whenever I have to make a decision at work, I just pick that Proverbs for the day. And sometimes just incidentally, it's what I needed. Uh, this week, I had to make a tough decision for our university. And I went to that pool. I said, ah, God, there's nothing in this one. No. <laughs> you know, help me. <laughs> but that was that was good for me because I'd not been reading my proverbs. So I was waiting for that magic, <laughs> magic one that day. But God always comes true. God always comes true. So let us, you know, continue to study is what you never know when you will need to pull it out. You never know when the Holy Spirit will bring it to your remember, remembrance. But if you study it in the volume of his word, as you're even in your, not just because you want something from him, but in your intimacy, like you're getting to know your lover more. You're getting to know him more and more. You're getting to know what he likes. You're getting, and in knowing him more, you also actually get to know yourself more. He exposes yourself to you, the things you're doing very well, the things you're not doing very well. So this is not just about, you know, this, magical God, like an idol that we just go to, you know, but this is about a God that wants to be your friend, wants to be your best friend, wants to hold your hand through life, through the practical things of life, not just meeting him up in your secret place, you know, but just being able to chat with him the whole day, you know, and uh, you'll be amazed. He will start giving you pictures of all those things you read in January, like, okay, in this situation, this is Joseph, this is this person, this is who you are in this picture, take action. Um, God loves you all. Please, uh, anybody, anybody, I can talk all day now, guys. Anybody wants to say something? Thank God for divine encounter. That was, I don't know about you. I was really, really blessed. I was really blessed. Um, anybody wants to say something that was not mentioned from the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and the book of Isaiah? Isaiah, we still have a long way to go. So, Good morning. This is Emma. Um, no, the only, the only thing I just wanted to say was just about that Songs of uh, Solomon. When I read it in the TPT translation, it was even by accident I stumbled across the TPT. But um, yeah, when I was reading it, I wasn't even really thinking about, you know, a man and woman, husband and wife relationship. I just kept seeing it as a love letter exchange between um, God and myself and that that like that was just what I saw it, it spoke so much to me and I just felt like oh my gosh like I felt so special you know reading it like God was just really speaking to me this was a love letter exchange between him and um, myself that was all awesome yes absolutely anyone else thank you so much Diana and I also like in the book of Ecclesiastes, I just saw this, I was taking notes when Stafolu was speaking, that having an eternal perspective, like as you go through that book, have a picture of, you know, be driven by eternity. And it just changes how you actually glean from that book. And then the book of Isaiah, I never thought about it as a courtroom, what Pastor Shem said. I never thought about it as a courtroom. So I can see Mrs. Amino smiling. <laughs> Don't take us to court next week, oh. <laughs> But um, anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, Steiner. Anyone else? That was to add, just real quick. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure if someone was talking. Um, I just wanted to say, um, reading the book of Ecclesiastes and some of the, it's like Solomon, King Solomon giving advice. And um, from what we've even learned so far, towards the end of his life, his heart turned away from God. So it put me, it was putting me in check that, 
for someone who was the wise, wisest man, the richest man. And it seemed like he didn't really follow his own advice when it came to women. So um, it, it just told me how much I need the Holy Spirit at all times, as long as we have this body, you know, not to rely so much on what we can do in our own strength, but just relying on him to obey that commandment, to, to follow what God tells us to do. Yes. So. Yes. Wow. That is powerful. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's just almost like a paradox when you look at his life and then everything. And I'm sure the times when he wrote it also, if we dig deep into when he wrote it after or before all those things, but it just teaches us that we do need the Holy Spirit. We do need him. And in addition to the Holy Spirit being with us, he's giving us his people to surround us, uh, accountability partners, you know, because sometimes your heart is so sad, you don't even want to listen to the Holy Spirit. But that's why you have this group of friends here on this uh, on this um, chat, people that can actually, not chat on Zoom, um, but people that can actually tell you the truth to your face. They don't mind, you know, how you're going to take it, but they can tell you the truth in love, you know, and um yeah, so just not drawing away from those type of people and making sure that your friends are people that can really tell you when you're going the wrong way. It's very key. And not, not feeling like you're a champion and everybody else listens to me, you know. So it, it's very, any, it doesn't matter what level you get to in life, always have those type of people. In fact, when we get off this call, I meet with my mentor every other Saturday. One of my mentors, um, uh, not Pastor, Pastor Me is my spiritual mother and mentor, but I also have another mentor that tells me stuff. You know, she would tell me to my face, hey, you know, so um, not just spiritually alone in your marriage, in your, at work. I have a group of, I call them our craftswomen. We all pray together. We all tell each other off, you're wrong, do this, you know. So it's very key in every area of your life, in your family, you know, people that can tell you. And of course, your kids, when they can speak, ooh. God uses their mouths to speak to you. <laughs> um, so anybody else? Anybody else wants to bless us with something um, from any of those books? Okay, it's 10 o'clock. I encourage you all. I know it's a lot. I know we have a lot going on. We wear so many hats. Please find time to study. Find time to listen to it. Audio, if you're an audio learner, if you're a visual learner, just turn to Stafolu to give you some slides about the picture she got for the week. <laughs> so I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Pastor Sheon. Thank you, Stafolu. So, um, but don't give up. Again, if you've, if you've uh, dropped off the hook, the line, just jump back on. We're all in it together. We all struggle with trying to keep up with all the chapters. So I won't, I won't come here and lie to you. So Please uh, jump back on and uh, be encouraged. Sister Jodianne, let's give it up for Jodianne. She helps provide us the recorded videos. So whenever you um, need to uh, go back to it or if you missed one. And like I said, by God's grace, what I'm, I see, what I feel God is planning is uh, for us to, you know, by God's grace next year, as we finish this, for each one of us to have our own platform like this, where we invite people from work or whatever. It's not a church thing. It's just about spreading the gospel practically. And actually it impacts in our lives going through the whole Bible. So don't just be cruising, thinking you are listening. You're about to be the one ministering. So this is... Um, this has been awesome. Let us pray. Father, we just give you all the glory. Daddy, we honor you. We thank you for Pastor Shen. We thank you for Sister Folu. We thank you for all the beautiful, wonderful women on this call, your daughters. That even as we go deeper into uh, this relationship with you, deeper into studying your word, knowing what you love, knowing who you are, understanding your ways, and understanding how much you love us. And God, I pray that you continue to wrap your arms around every woman. Lord, I pray for any woman suffering in any way, oh Lord, suffering from the yoke of sickness, the bondage of um, any sort of bondage that they need deliverance. I set you loose in the name of Jesus. Father, 
Father, any hearts that needs to be mended, Daddy, mend their heart. Anybody that needs your oil of joy, let it flow through. I commit their children into your hand, King of glory. I pray, oh God, according to your word, that their children are anointed and untouchable. We thank you because, oh God, they will be known as the seed you are blessed. That even as we go into this week, we ask for strength, we ask for grace, as we press on to everything we're doing as women, we want to know you more. We want to love you more, oh God. And let our life, let our life be written epistles of your grace. Let our lives be written epistles of your glory. Let our life be written epistles of your love, even from our bedroom, oh God, all the way to our boardroom in the lives of our children. We give you all the glory this morning. We magnify you because you are the God that answers before we even speak. That it let that be the story of every woman this week. Whatever is burning in their heart, oh God, answer before they speak. Show them your name. Show them your glory. Show them your power. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, women of God. Love you so much. Um, if you're being blessed, continue to invite your friends to this. Um, and let us continue to uh, go to new levels. New levels will come as you go into new levels in the word of God. It's, it's automatic. You don't even need to pray for new levels. It's, it just comes. You go deeper in God, it happens. And um, you also need him at that new level to give you wisdom, to help you make decisions. And um, okay, I love you all. Good night. <laughs> Thank you.